Welcome to exciting non-conference girls hockey on Park TV 16. On behalf of John Basil, my color man, my name is John Fromm, and welcome to another year of St. Louis Park girls hockey. As you take a look, the Orioles of St. Louis Park will host the Matamidi Zephyrs tonight. St. Louis Park comes into the game with a 1-2-1 record under second-year head coach Donnie Williams, and the Zephyrs from the east side of St. Paul come in with a 1-1-1 one, one, and one mark. Um, I'm honored this year as you take a look at the wide-angle view of the rec center to be joined by really a hockey expert uh, growing up in the Edina area in John Basil, who's really close to both the girls and boys program. And John, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and your background. Well, thank you, John. And those are very kind words. Uh, and, uh, you know, we want to be truthful this year. I don't know about an expert if that'll work, but it's uh, it's nice to be here and nice to be here uh, uh, for the first game and a kickoff. And what an exciting uh, day today. And we're not only the parkettes, but the band is here. This, uh, this uh, rec center should be rocking here in a few minutes. Really just a great environment on this Tuesday evening, as you mentioned, the band and also Linnea Donahue bringing the parkettes over. This is our first of four girls games we're going to call this year on Park TV 16 for the Oriole program. And John, uh, as I mentioned, you, uh, you had the honor of playing in the early 1980s for Edina's legendary coach, Willard Eichla, and grew up playing in the Edina system. And now you not only played college hockey at UW-Stevens Point, um, as a goaltender, but also have Elena and Anna, a couple of your daughters out here in the girls team. And uh, tell us a little bit about how they've been reacting the first four games of the season and their level of excitement. I think they've been very excited about this season as we've got going, and the whole team has been. There's been a lot of hard uh, work ethic. I've had a chance to watch some of their practices. Uh, the girls are working hard, the entire team. They've got a nice sized team this year with three goalies. Uh, first time we've seen three goalies on the girls squad in some time. Uh, they've been added, uh, there's added defense uh, uh, defense uh, people out there, which is nice to see. Uh, we got a couple transfers in, uh, it was nice to see. We got actually the two transfers in. Uh, one uh, one came from Hill Murray and the other one came from a private school in Minneapolis and that's Bridget Duffy who okay. of course older uh, uh, older sister also went to St. Louis Park. Uh, but adding those two to the roster have been some nice strength, some nice depth. It's nice to see a, a couple of those uh, private school people choose St. Louis Park in our school district. That's exciting and we should mention one of, you mentioned Bridget Duffy who will get a ton of ice time up front tonight for the Orioles and Coach Williams was mentioning that she's somebody that will rotate back on defense on occasion and Samantha Jermusek is the sophomore defense woman we were discussing yes. from Hill Murray whose brother Frank is new to the boys program as well and he's a senior for Park. Absolutely and and unfortunately the uh, the report I heard right before game time is Samantha is out with an injured uh, broker toe oh, and, no. and so I think you're right we're going to see Bridget Duffy getting a lot of ice time uh, back on defense today. Uh, we'll see what uh, Coach uh, Donnie Williams does with the late notice of the injury. Um, uh, but uh, my understanding is Samantha will not be able to play tonight. Okay. Uh, she's been recovering from it. She's been playing through some some pain and uh, I think the trainers felt it was best to rest her and try to get that thing healed. So I don't know if we'll see her out on the ice tonight and that'll mean mm. Bridget will be playing a lot of defense. Right and that's exciting and uh as we see the Zephyrs step, make their way out on the ice. Laura May is the first year head coach for Mata Minai, and they've got some familiar hockey names uh, in the hockey world. Former, as you hear the St. Louis Park band glare up the rouser down there. They've got, they're coached by Laura May, as I mentioned, a first year head coach as the Orioles hit the ice. And they're ably assisted by Lee Erickson and Ryan McAlpine. And I believe there's a distant relative of former golfer Chris McAlpine there. Because one of the main scorers for Matamidi is a young lady named Kelly McAlpine, who's their leading scorer as a, as a senior for them. So take a look at the Orioles as they, as they don their beautiful orange and black striped socks. A new addition to the uh, fashion statement here at the rec center. Makes them a little more ferocious out there, John. Yeah, absolutely. To take a look, it is quite a bit larger roster. I know four seniors graduated last year for the Orioles, but having uh, Elena Basil as a, as a big leader who's already netted five goals and tacked on an assist in the first four games, she, the power, Donnie was mentioning that the power play has already put four goals up so far in four games, and that's more than they produced all last year. Yeah, the power play has been looking really good. They've been moving the puck well, and they've uh, when you get movement and you get uh, people to shift and you got them outnumbered, you can put the puck in the net. That's great. 
As we take a look at the lineups will be introduced here. Coach Donnie Williams, as we mentioned, in his second year for the Orioles. Starting lineup for Matamita as they're announcing. That's the number one, Angela Boreen, their senior goalie, gets all the ice for them. And they're playing their first line, which is Madison Berggren, Natalie Donovan, Kelly McAlpine. And on defense, they're going to go with one of their senior captains, number 18, Paige Gibson, and number 12, Ellie Dean is a junior. Like the Orioles, Matamita has only got three seniors, so it should be a, a lot of youth well served on both squads today. And just looking at some of the scores, it should be a balanced game, I think. Yeah, I think it'll be a, a very good contest. I think we'll see a lot of end-to-end -end action and a lot of neutral zone transition throughout the game. There you see one of the new young guns for the Orioles, number 21, the goaltender. Peyton Staffney getting her second start. Megan Barron's the senior defenseman back there as well, number 22. She's joined on the other side by Natalie Vig, her defensive partner. And Lauren Brun Bryant, Molly Artson, and Anna Basil, that top line for St. Louis Park. We'll start things off. We're going to step away momentarily as the St. Louis Park Band is going to lead us in the national anthem. We encourage you to let your friends know as this game is broadcast live on Park TV, let them know to tune in, flip that dial over. tonight and that always adds a ton to the environment. I remember going to some games at Old Braemar when the Dyna Band would have it going right behind the goaltender there. Yeah it certainly gets everybody fired up. It gets a little high school atmosphere and it uh, gets the players uh, juiced up and ready to go as well. Uh, Peyton who was started in the second game I tell you had an opportunity to watch the first game and looked really strong came out challenged well made some great saves to help uh, Helped the girls win in overtime that very first game right here in this rink. And I think Donnie had given me that she's got a 1-0-1 balance sheet on the year. And you mentioned that opening night win where they were trailed 2-0 against Tartan. What's Peyton's background? Uh, it's a little bit, she's a junior with the program. Yeah, right? yeah, and she learned to actually skate down in Mankato and then came up here uh, to Bloomington. And after uh, being in Bloomington, uh, came over to St. Louis Park and uh, has joined the squad. And this is her first year with St. Louis Park. Okay, great. Well, and I know Hannah Broderson had handled tons of the net responsibilities the last four years. But as a senior, she's still getting a, a lot of good ice time in the net. But just to have that great competition, and they're really blessed on the Orioles side to have Josh Schwartz out as a goalie yeah. coach, along with Donnie's background, 16 years as a coach too. So absolutely, and Josh, of course, coming through St. Louis Park, I just enjoyed watching him play. I'd stand behind the net, oh. and Josh uh, coaching these goalies is a heck of a, uh, still a heck of a goalie. Was a heck of a goalie for Park and at Gustavus, where he was an All-American at a yeah. very, very good uh, Division Three school. Very good. He's just take a look at the senior Megan Barons trying to push it down low for St. Louis Park to start it off. Both teams will match up their top units and this is the senior center Natalie Donovan number eight for the Zephyrs from Matamidi. She's pinned low on the wall by Barons and you'll see Natalie Vig her defensive partner also down low there. And the puck is pushed off the near wall and out to center ice where Lauren Brune Bryan will turn on the Jets and try to win that race down low. 
Ruin Bryant with a goal and assist already on the year. And it'll see interesting to see how the Orioles rotate their three lines forward. And with the 17 minute periods, often you do need three lines in high school hockey. And the Zephyrs will break it out. Their first unit still out there. Here's Kelly McAlpine, the leading scorer for Matamidi, number 17. She's got a right-handed shot, and according to Coach May, is one of their true snipers. So watch for her, number 17. Paige Gibson, one of the captains for Matamidi, will push it up the near wall. And St. Louis Park also changes, and they get a fresh crew out there. Puck is shot down low this time and kicked around by Amy Krebsbach, the defense woman for Matamidi. Behind her own net to Deans. Deans playing left defense, but a nice pinch down low by Megan Behrens as she's able to hold it in. And Basil behind her net, Elena Basil, the freshman phenom, trying to add to her five goals and one assist total. And a nice breakout to relieve pressure by Matamidi. And this is Jesse Hagstrom for the Zephyrs. Nice little drop pass that time to Bartholomew, and Bartholomew will beat Beggins on the far wing, go behind the net and sweep it out front, and Staffney will fall on it to relieve pressure, so Bartholomew sw swings wide and beats Megan on the far side, but nothing going there. She tries to push it out front. Now look through some of those changes that uh, uh, Bridget Duffy was coming back on defense uh, for the first period at least. Yeah, Bridget Duffy, number nine there, as, as you had mentioned, with the injury to Jermusic, she's going to play a lot of defense tonight. Oh, off the draw, number 21, Callie Hinkle for the Zephyrs with a nice shot that does hit the defense woman and bounce into the corner. Teams will battle down low for the Zephyrs. Push it nicely back to the point where Erickson will hold it down and push it down low to Krennel. Beggins, excuse me, Barron's trying to win that battle down low. Shoot it! Puck a shot off to the side, and Staffney will push it down low. There's Sophia Kiefer trying to relieve pressure for St. Louis Park, but Erickson does a nice job pushing it down low again. Megan Behrens will see a lot of ice time at her de left defense position for St. Louis Park, and she's also going to have to carry the puck out a lot, as she does there to try to break it out of her own zone. Contact on the near wall. Puck is shot down by Shrank for St. Louis Park. Leah, number 11, the junior, she push it around the wing there. And here's one of the youngsters, Catherine Evans for St. Louis Park, getting some ice time early in the game for Coach Williams. Puck is stolen away as St. Louis Park will finish their change. The Zephyrs will bring their third unit out there with Selwood, St. Martin, and Heinel. And they'll also make a change here with speed. Molly Arnson up the near side with speed. The junior she makes a nice move around the Zephyrs defenseman on her strong side with a nice shot down. Almost a pass out front, doesn't click home, but St. Louis Park is able to hold it in. That time, that time Anna Basil, the junior, is able to work with Molly Artson and Lauren Brun Bryan, that top unit, to get some pressure for Park. McAlpine, along with Donovan and Berger, and that top unit out there for Matamidi. Only four minutes into the game here as we broadcast from the rec center tonight. Remember, this game is live on Park TV. So if you're watching currently on cable, let your friends know if they're at home to make their way out to the rec or to flip their cable channels on over. Both teams will change. A lot of action on the near wall here as both teams still feel, feeling each other out and we're going to have an icing call, John. So yeah. It's interesting to see, you know, Donnie had mentioned I saw Catherine Evans coming out there. I wasn't sure how much we were going to see some of the young guns early on, but... I th yeah, I think Catherine Evans moved up into Bridget's spot with Bridget moving back on D. Uh, yeah. So it'll give her an opportunity to step up uh, and get some ice time tonight and help contribute to the team. Yeah, well, we mentioned the girls have been practicing for almost four weeks now, four or five weeks, and have had four games. There's Elena Basil with speed up the near side. She's only a ninth grader. That's really a young guns line when Duffy is at that center position, but... Basil's a ninth grader and Morris Cunningham, number 27, only a 10th grader. Puck is taken away by Bartholomew and she's got Rath Manor with her. Bartholomew to Rath Manor. Oh, and a nice shot and a puck is shot in on net and there is a goal by number four, excuse me, number 14, I believe that is. And that is Emma Bartholomew scores the goal. Yeah, the, the Orioles got caught a little bit up and uh, there was a three on one as we see on the replay coming down. And it was a nice block, and then the puck just kind of came, uh, fortunately, right to someone on off the left side and was able to bury the biscuit. 
and I'm not sure if that was 14 or four, but we'll check on that. Either way, I believe that might have been Amy Krebsbach, the defenseman. But here's Bartholomew again. She was part of that rush earlier. She goes to her backhand, pushes it down low for them. So one nothing, four and a half minutes into period one. Back to the point for Krebsbach. There's a pair of sisters out there. There's the Krebsbach sisters and the Bergeron sisters from Adamini. This is Amy Krebsbach from a right defense position. She makes some moves down low. Buck is going to be taken away by Cunningham, and she'll try to push it on out, but it's held in that time by Erickson. And Erickson trying to win a nice battle down there. She does a nice job containing the Oriole pressure. And St. Louis Park will have to try to change angles and break it out the opposite way. Puck goes through three sets of legs, and the Orioles will be able to change on the fly. Looks like the Orioles' third line is out. Here's Leah Schrank. She's got plenty of opportunities. Number 11, back to the point this time. And a wrist shot momentarily hits Heinel for Matamidi. Puck a shot out front. Evans not able to get a stick down on it. And a nice breakup off the near wall, but Megan's, Megan Behrens is able to push that on the net. And Puck is kicked aside by Erickson from her right defense slot, and she'll skate it on up. Behrens, as a senior, we're going to see a ton of Megan on the ice today, let alone with the fact that your music's out, as you mentioned. And she's got an important responsibility. She's got to pinch down low on occasion to try to maintain offensive zone pressure. We'll see how they work that. Yeah, Megan's a big part of this team. Uh, she's a very offensive defense person uh, and also very strong on her stick. Does a wonderful job. As you see right there, she shoots it out front. Tries to find Shrank on the weak side, but unable to do so. But Leah is able to steal that puck and push it out to relieve pressure where Gibson, one of the senior captains for Matamida, will take that away, but Megan says not so fast, and she dishes it down low yeah. herself. And that was a nice play by Leah getting it outside of the blue. The battle of the blues can be so important, and if you're within five feet of the blue in your own zone, make sure you get it out, and it's in five feet in the offensive zone, keep it in. It was a very nice play by Leah to get that out. Just a little over 10 minutes remaining in the first period here. Puck is shot again, that time by Gibson. Corralled behind the Orioles zone. Oh, and Gibson's able to hold it in. A wrist shot just goes wide as Staffy drops that right pad out, but doesn't need to that time. Puck goes wide. Nice crowd turning out tonight for this game here at the rec center. Only the second home game for the Orioles. And if it's anything like that first one, that overtime thriller, Puck is passed out front. Donovan goes to the backhand. Here's Evans again with a wrist shot. Just misses the far post. And that time, Gibson along with Evans on that back defense line. Park's able to get a change, and that just missed the... Oh, and that puck is stolen away, and a nice, beautiful shot by Brood Bryant. An errant pass, and Brood Bryant really yes. heads up to get her stick on the ice. She, she was in the right position, made a nice shot. Oh, what a <laughs> shot by Megan. What a, what a save. Paul, I hope we wow. go to the replay of that on the truck. Megan just corralled that thing and launched almost a beautiful snapshot that the, that the, uh, the goaltender... Did you take a look at that? She had to go high with that glove because that might have hit that far post or That was in. a beautiful shot. She beautiful. really came down on it. Nice whip on the stick. Nice job by, by Boreen, the goaltender for Matabidi. Here's Deans. We'll push it on up for the Zephyrs. And here's Basil. We'll steal it away. With Basil pushes it out front, take it away momentarily, and St. Louis Park will try to hold their zone where Be Megan Barron's again. Battling down low this time with Bartholomew. We call those two numbers a lot already. And Elena Basil out there as well for St. Louis Park. Here's Natalie Vick for the Orioles. Another one of the, the youngsters for St. Louis Park that Coach Williams is relying on a lot. Bartholomew behind the net. Goes out front with a stuff shot attempt. Staffney able to keep that right pad down and that puck pushes away. A mad scramble in front with lots of legs and arms. Not able to quite see who's got that, but it is taken away by Hagstrom for the Zephyrs. Hagstrom back to the point. She, she tries to get it in. Puck is shot down low that time and another backhand attempt that time by Hagstrom. Nice pressure this time by the Zephyrs. One of the Orioles is hauled down behind her own net. Nice cross diagonal pass that time by Matamidi. They need a whistle at this point. Yeah, St. Louis Park trying to get some pressure to relieve some pressure. We'll see what they do here. Nice job by the Zephyrs holding it in. We'll see if Megan just ices that puck. Or better, yes, she, shoot, 
she takes a slap shot into her teammates from <laughs> backside. It's right. a unique pass, but uh, it was effective. Uh, yeah. Those Basil girls are tough to be able to handle that slap shot <laughs> pass right in the keister, right? right. <laughs> uh. Uh, so Park is able to relieve pressure, and here's Leah Shrink again. She's another young lady that's really worked hard on her skills. I always see her up here working on shooting and working on different dry land drills for Park. Absolutely. Leah is a very, very hard worker, and Leah is, is uh, one that I tell you was one of the first Mike teams I ever coached in St. Louis Park. I had Leah on my team. Oh, so it's that's really, really a joy to see her out here uh, stay with the game and play all the way in high school. It's got to be just wonderful to have a nice vantage point to see all the young girls that you've known for so long and your daughter's friends. It is. It's fun to see them, uh, you know, when they were just, it seems like just yesterday they were stepping on this ice and oh. we were doing all the skate tying in the socks, but what a fun sport. Keeps them busy in the winter and it's uh, great to see them come all the way through and play a little high school hockey. And I don't think it gets much better for you as a father to be able to see both your daughters playing at the same time on the same team. That's just something you're never going to get these years back and to have video memories too of games like this is always wonderful where dad can always, you'll be the, the color man forever for these games in their history yeah, yeah. it wasn't uh, it always it uh, wasn't always that easy oftentimes they had all three kids on three different teams but it is nice having two of them on the same team yeah Matamita corrals the puck behind their zone and that's McAlpine again the leading scorer for the Zephyrus nice cross diagonal pass that time to Basil and here comes Anna and she punches it in that time we should mention Anna's a junior. She's playing on that first line, and Elena's only a freshman. So John's got a whole other year to enjoy the girls playing together, as well as Willie, his youngest, who's really done a nice job with that Pee Wee A team. It's nice to see our all our uh, teams, our Bantam A team, Pee Wee A, and Squirt A team have all been off to real nice starts. They all played uh, two of them in the Blaine tournament this past weekend and one in the Hopkins tournament. And all three of our teams uh, brought home hardware, all finished in the top three of each of the tournaments. Boy, that is something, too. It is really nice to see uh, uh, our Pee Wee A team actually uh, in the single A now that they've gone to single yeah, A and double A. Under that new concept, right? Concept was actually ranked number one in state. Uh, really? And uh, they dropped down to number four or five, but after wow. their first, uh, first three, three games, they were undefeated and got the number one ranking. So wow. it's been a, some time since we've seen Park as a number one team, uh, but it was nice to see that ranking. Boy, that's fantastic. And, yeah. You know, I think that's really a great thing that Minnesota hockey has done, too, because you take a look at the White Bear Lake, Sea Dinas, the Maple Groves, Wyzetta, who, when they have three, four times as many players than you and historically only had one A team, it's really a nice thing that they've been able to balance things out, so. It's back to live action here. Puck a shot out front and almost a nice chance that time for Rathman, or she was in front of her net. Here's number 12 for them. Deans as she'll shoot it in down low and Basil takes it away for St. Louis Park. Here comes Elena that time. Puck is taken away momentarily by Hagstrom. Hagstrom up the wall there. It's being pursued by Cunningham nicely. Cunningham attempts to ride her off the pass and she does do a nice job with a poke check there. And here you see Sophia Noreen behind her own net, number 24. I think she's in her third year already of varsity play for St. Louis Park. She I'm, is, yeah. She's yet only a sophomore, I believe. So Beautiful skater, uh, can move the puck very quickly. Yep. If she sees an alley, she can rush the puck. And very I know, effective. And I know she's done a nice job, but I know I really enjoy her. Uh, her father, Howard's really been a big booster of your program, too, and a great resource. Yeah, Howard's been uh, very active uh, for many years in the youth. At one time, he was the girls' coordinator uh, okay. for the okay. association uh, when we were merged uh, with, at that time, Armstrong and Cooper, uh, mm -hmm. a program you know very well. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. We called that the three-headed monster when it was Armstrong, Cooper, and Park. Park. That's what we used yes, to say. Yes, yes. The three-headed Hedra is what right. we called it. <laughs> there was a lost draw there and a nice shot, nice uh, shot. by Matamidi off the draw. They're primarily using two lines, the Zephyrs, and they're, they're spotting in their third line, but this is the Berggren, Donovan, McAlpine line. And then they're rotating five defenders. As you see the St. Louis Park behind their own own. Just a little over four minutes remaining in the first period as Megan Behrens will try to regroup things behind the net. A lot of the defense been able to pinch in for Matamidi and hold pressure each time. St. Louis Park bringing their forwards back deep in the zone, trying to keep that third one high sometimes for the breakouts. So we'll see how Donnie makes any adjustments for the breakouts. 
Yeah, we are getting bottled up. They're pitching hard, and they're and of course they're running top two lines a lot. Yeah, which is uh, uh, keeping us back on our heels. Well, and one of the things too that's so different, John, compared to when you and I were growing up, is now with 17-minute periods compared to the 12 minutes right. back, and even in the 70s before they went to 15, you really do need that third line. And, and if you're only going to play two, you're really going to have to be <laughs> unbelievable yeah. safe, right? <laughs> so. Three and a half remaining here, and for the Zephyrs, a little one on three break this time, and that's number seven for them, Selwood. Third liner, she's able to hold pressure behind the Oriole zone, and just a nice job. Just She didn't have numbers, so she helped, kept that puck down low on her own in, on her forehand. Another hold that time by Matamidai as their senior captain, Gibson, on the point holds it in. Noreen behind her own net. Does a nice job trying to take Bartholomew off the puck, and here's Krebs back, Anna Krebs back. Stolen away that time by Bartholomew. Bartholomew, the wrist shot goes high over Staffney's net. She couldn't get quite get a glove on it. Matamidai got player camped out front. Here's Bartholomew with a shot, and a nice job by Staffney order to hold her ground. Zephyrs did have some good pressure there, and one of their uh, wingers was right out front with no one on her as no both the covered. defense. The defense people were, were caught in other scenarios there. They did, and we always want to have one defense person in front of the net. They both got caught behind, and some great work by the goaltender to hang on to that and not create another rebound attempt. Right. Held in again, and a little slap shot at the point is turned nicely off to the side by Staffney. Back again, and here's Krebsbach again. Amy Krebsbach pinches it down low, and almost a redirect on that effort by the Zephyrs. Here's Gibson again over to Krebsbach. I think that yeah, just barely just went outside barely the line. Yeah, the Zephyrs have the, Kreb, the Krebsbach sisters, number four and six on defense, and then they have the then they have the Bergeron sisters, number three and fifteen. Park comes at you with the Basil sisters. So they, uh, it's it's interesting how much hockey, no matter what community you're in, is a family affair. Right. I, uh, last year, I think between the boys and girls varsity, the number the cut, you had the Cunninghams on the girls. Yeah. You had, you had the Barons. Green, yeah, you had the, the yeah, you had the Greenbush. Uh, yes. Sister yeah. was a captain of the girls, and her brother on the boys team. Um, you know, it, it just uh, the Fort Myer brothers were on the boys, so it just seems that there is a. Oh, a beautiful save that time on a redirect. Puck is lost out front. 21, Callie Heinel was behind the net for Matamida, and she she ran right out front, and, and Staffney really had to drop that left pad and get a beautiful pad save, and then somehow corral the rebound. As she didn't have any, boy, beautiful job. Nobody could tell where the puck is. Nice job that time. I want to give a special shout out to Selwood from Matamida, who went on the weak side to try to Absolutely. crash that net and look yep. for a, They were crashing that at heart. And Park's got to find a way to uh, get that puck out of that threat zone and, and chip it out if they have to, because they really are getting bottled up uh, by their deep pinching hard. Yep. Here's the Arntzen line out there with Brune Bryan and Anna Basil. Little momentary hold, but another nice hold by Amy Krebsbach again. And here's Natalie Vig behind her net. And every time Park tries to break it up off the boards, they aren't able to, to do so or the speed. And here's Kresbach with a slap shot again that's deflected off the stick of Basil. Only a minute 30 remaining in the first period. We should mention to stick with us after the first period. We've got an exciting guest as Angie Keasley is going to join us. One of the St. probably St. Louis Park's best ever girls hockey player. So stick with us. Only a minute 20 remaining as both teams will change on the fly. And here's Eva Rose for St. Louis Park, number three. Also a sophomore. Basil, oh, with a beautiful move. Elena goes to the forehand and the backhand. Elena in the corner, looking out front. Who does she got? She's got Morris Cunningham trying to help her down low. And Eva Rose will try to help on that left wing position. But a nice breakout that time by McAlpine as she just misses connecting with Bergren on that pass. Under a minute remaining for St. Louis Park, and here's Duffy, who's doing a nice job at defense for St. Louis Park. John mentioned she's a transfer over. And Noreen behind her own net, a beautiful one-time pass. Puck is pinched aside, but taken away that time nicely by 15 Bergeron for the Zephyrs. Good job by Bridget tying up uh, yeah. in front of the net, and here we go. We got her out of the zone. A little little scrum down there on the weak side, and I don't know if we got an icing call, but it looked like we had number seven. 
We had the battle of the sevens and the seventeens there as the laner ran into Joe Selwood and they had some inadvertent contact. contact so yep. just 24 seconds remain in the first period here. Face off will be to the left of goalie Staffney. Looks like the first line is coming out for Park. Nice job again that time as it's held in. Deans holds it in that time for them. Only 10 seconds remaining. We'll see if St. Louis Park can try to relieve pressure here. There's oh, nice job. Out. With seven seconds remaining, we'll see if Anna can get, reach that puck, and it is chipped ahead, and that'll just about do it here for the end of the first period. Don't have the official shot total, but after one, we've got Matamidi up one to nothing here at the rec center. The only scoring of the first period came early on at the 4:15 mark, as number five, number excuse me, number four, Amy Krebsbach scored the goal. I believe the assist went to Emma, Emma Bartholomew on that assist, and we do not have any penalties for the first stanza. Let's take a look over there as the Orioles regroup. Donnie Williams and his staff. Official shots on goal for the first period. We're 12 to 4 uh, in favor of Matamidi. 12 to 4. And so pretty indicative, actually. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, they had a nice job, and we'll see what kind of changes Donnie might make, changes he might make with his back check. Um, anything you might see that you would suggest? Yeah, I think as you look at it, they had trouble breaking out of the zone. You know, they got up the wings, and those D were coming down very heavy. And uh, I think probably the thing that they need to do is they need to move it quick, stick to stick. And if they can't, uh, they can't get it uh, out, then chip it off the boards and pick it up at center ice. And here with me is Angie Keesley. Angie Keesley is a St. Louis Park graduate. Uh, who, uh, Angie, can you hear me all right? I can. All right, welcome to the booth. They're going to turn the camera over here a little bit, but uh, what, what, give us a little recap. What years did you go to St. Louis Park? Well, I graduated in 2005, so. Yeah, well, well, welcome, Angie. We're going to. Oh. I'm John Fromm. Yeah, nice to, nice to meet you. I'm, we're going to, we're showing the hot, we're showing the close up of, uh, of your retired jersey. That's got to be a special highlight every time you walk in here. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see. Um, I guess I didn't ever expect that, but um, definitely honored that that's up there, so it's pretty cool. Well, Angie, after you were done with uh, St. Louis Park, and it was uh, you graduated in 2005, uh, and, you, and how many years of varsity hockey did you play for St. Louis Park? I did five years. I did eighth grade. Um, through my senior year. Which tells, I think, people listening at home and watching at home a little bit about Angie, that she started that early playing for this varsity team. And then, of course, after you were done here, uh, you went on to the University of Wisconsin-Madison and played for, uh, what years were you at Madison? So that'd be 2005, 2006 year through 2009. You had to think about that yeah, a little bit. That, <laughs> that, that was a bit easier than my high school years, though. <laughs> That's yeah. right. And, and Angie was very, uh, very fortunate for Armour and her time there to play on how many national championship teams? Three. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that something I remember? I know every, the, the Sun paper was always following all your exploits. And, and I know your brother was, you skated a lot with your brother, right? You guys had a pond in your backyard you kind of grew up in or on the creek there. Yeah. And your brother was quite a quite a player at Park and at Gustavus too, right? Yeah, yep. Um, actually, when I was growing up, I, I played with a lot of those boys. And then even in high school, we always played on the pond with them. So that probably helped me out a bit. Sure. Well, that pond is legendary. <laughs> uh, the Keesley Pond still today, I, I tell you, even the young boys, I have a son who's a peewee and of course if they get a day where they can go skate on the Keesley pond and thanks to Angie's dad that pond still exists today he still maintains it and he lets anybody come down and skate and so if the city uh, parks aren't in good shape <laughs> um, uh, they can go over to the Keesley pond and get some ice time and it's 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 really something that uh, and I, I when I talk about legendary the kids if they got to skate on Keesley Pond, they talk about it. So it's it's really a little legendary uh, rink on the creek here in St. Louis Park, and it's uh, picturesque, and you can't get the kids off that pond. Yeah, that's, yeah, a lot of fun. No, and I remember, too, you, you played with uh, Brandy Frakey, too, and some yep. other really great girls, and Lisa Martinson's come through the program. And yep. 
Donnie Williams was just so happy that on occasion when you're able to skate with the girls, how enamored and happy and thrilled this coaching staff is to that you're that you bought a house in the park too and and recently got married once to tell us a little bit about that whole setup <laughs> i did get married yep so i'm no longer peacefully yeah which, which is uh weird to say but are, um are you hyphenated no nope. okay good good for you no nope. so my new name angie johnson okay and um, yeah. got married in august and it's been great since, so. It's wonderful to see it come back to St. Louis Park and buy a house here. Um, but tell uh, tell us a little bit about your husband and uh, uh, his involvement in hockey and where he's coaching currently. Yeah, he's definitely involved in hockey too. He grew up in a hockey family. Um, he played at Augsburg College. Sure. Here uh, in Minneapolis. So that worked out good for us. And um, now he's an assistant coach at Augsburg. So oh, okay. He's helping out with the program there, which is great, too. Okay. And uh, uh, Angie's father-in-law was fortunate to be on the 1980 Gold Olympic oh, hockey team. Oh, is that Mar Mark, Mark Johnson's, Johnson's father-in-law? Yeah, okay. Mark Johnson's sure. father-in-law. And uh, I can remember, I, I don't think I've ever told you this story uh, or your husband, but I can remember being on the ice with uh, your father-in-law in Aspen, Colorado. And oh. he was nice enough when I was setting up the net to shoot a puck into the back of my shin. Uh, but I, <laughs> what, was this during like the '84 this, Olympic this trials? Was, or something, uh, or? Prior to that, I was out okay. there for a hockey camp. It was in 19 uh, summer of 1982. Oh wow! Uh, okay. Not to age myself, but uh, <laughs> no, but, no. But you know, Angie's career uh, wasn't done after college, was it, Angie? You had an opportunity to play for the uh, national team. Yep. Yeah, I did. I. I was on the team for about four or five months, um, right up to Olympic time, and unfortunately, I got cut right before, but it's definitely a good opportunity. Um, traveled a lot with the team. Um, a lot of my old Wisconsin teammates were also on the team, and we were coached by Mark uh, then as well. So it was great. It was kind of a great transition um, just from college and then on to the real world, I guess. Um, just having just that uh, second chance and that uh, experience. And then um, it was a great opportunity and definitely helped me transition away from hockey yeah. onto my next step in life. And what is your next step? We had we'd heard you bought a house a while back over off of Cedar Lake Road. And um, what are you up to now? And What's yeah. going on in your world? Um, I bought a house a few years ago, and I'm currently working at Dell. Oh, at the com Dell Computers? Yep. Or? Oh, wow, you yeah. must be really smart. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's that, it's that. that St. Louis Park <laughs> education. Yes, right? yes. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I, I was previously working for a smaller company, Compellent, which got bought up by Dell a few years ago. Um, so it's been going well. Um, I'm in the sales department there. Okay for now. Not sure what the future has in store for me, but it's a great opportunity right now. Good, good. And yeah, that's that's wonderful. And and tell us what your brother John's been up to since he finished at Gustavus, too. I know we got a lot of banners up here for the girls and boys program, and I know he was on that 2003 state tournament team. Yep. And yep. Uh, he played at Gustavus all four years, and then he graduated from there. I want to say 2007. Okay. He's a few years older than I am, and he has been selling airplane parts ever since he oh, graduated. Wow. So same company. So hasn't you, left. So he enjoys you, it. I envision a Keasley sales company in the future. Uh, yeah. <laughs> with what I'm hearing here. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Maybe some specialty products or right. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. Neat. Yeah. Well, Angie, you had an opportunity to be on the ice a little bit with the girls before the season to help them with captain's practice. Uh, uh, what do you see from, and you, you helped out last year with the preseason ice as well. Uh, what have you seen from year over year? What do you think about this year and watching the first period of this game? Yeah, I definitely think they're looking um, good. Every time, I mean, starting from last year on to this year, every time I was on, with the, on the ice with them, you know, it's you can see their passion and their excitement to be there. and. You can see how much they're improving and they enjoy being out there and um, definitely a lot of great girls, a lot of great talent and I think I see good things this year. 
Well, and it's got to be neat for you, too, seeing, like, you know, when Donnie took over last year. My son just loves Donnie being a goalie in all the years of the boys. But um, having Josh Ward out, who must have been a high school friend of yours, or you know, and Alec Rabine and Jake Evers, a lot of park people coaching and having you as a former park player. Yeah. That's a lot of really good role models for the girls and the boys. And um, I know that means a lot to the parents as well as the coaches to know. Yeah, I definitely think that's really cool just to see everyone come back and help out. And even tonight when I walked in, it was funny. I saw um, some other girls that used to play in the team. And you have Peter Levy announcing the game. So it's definitely <laughs> fun. It's, you know, yeah. you come here and you you see everyone you know. And it's it shows what a community it really is. We, we were commenting earlier, John and I, how much we love it, too, when, like, the band can come and how they divide that up. And, yeah. And having some of these games on tape, I'm sure you probably have one or two from from your plethora of goals you scored in your high school yeah, career. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> think I still have all those tapes. So. <laughs> and congratulations. I know uh, when you went to the University of Wisconsin, I'm sure there was a lot of, uh, a lot of Minnesota fans that would have loved to see you here, but it was sure neat that you got to play against the Gophers and UMD, Mankato, and have all those national titles. Yeah, and, yeah. it was definitely fun, I, especially the Minnesota game was a lot of fun to play, yeah. playing back here. That Ritter Arena is a really nice environment too, isn't it? Yeah, or, yeah. Yep. yeah. They have a great setup over there. Good. And it, did, did the girls play at the new stadium on campus uh, as well in, in Madison? Yep, they just built a new rink um, for the girls that just oh, okay. it was completed this year. So their season, starting the season, they started playing at that rink. So it's a very similar setup to Ritter, except there's not stands on one of the four sides. So, uh, but it's definitely a beautiful rink. And I really wish, I really wish a lot of boys and girls high school regular season games could be played down at Ritter because I, I just think it's one of my favorite places to watch any form of hockey, yeah. environment wise and you know nice amenities and good, yep. perfect size kind yeah. of yeah. yeah yeah I know um, the Division three um, men's hockey sometimes has their yes, uh, yeah. frozen four there That's yes. great. Yep, I was down there. I watched St. Norbert's a few years back win the national oh. title right there at Ritter. It's a beautiful venue, great sight lines, just a nice little rink. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I know. Uh, I know we really are thrilled that you were able to join us. We're trying to encourage uh, a lot of former dignitaries and famous park people to come up. But I hope you'll join us again. We're doing four girls games this okay. year and five boys games, and we'd love to have your insight if you ever want to pop up and. Uh, polish those speaking skills even further <laughs> <laughs> not that you need to if you're in sales already but <laughs> yeah. i could probably use some work <laughs> yeah you know i gotta say angie's comment about the community and uh john what you just talked about boy is it nice to see people come back and i don't think people realize how special of a community we have in st louis park how everybody does want to come back and they want to live here and they want their kids to go to this great school district it's just uh, great to see and it's great to see all the people that you just talked about that are here it's great to see you coming back and it's great that uh, uh, you convinced your new husband to live in St. Louis Park <laughs> yeah. as well so hey when we're gonna t cover it next intermission but big thumbs up to all the park parents and whatnot about the new locker room set up for the girls yeah that, I don't have you had a chance I to, been down had there a chance yet? to see it but uh, I heard a few people <laughs> talking about it over there so I definitely love to take a look you're I tell you you're gonna say where was this locker room when I was here I so know. <laughs> yeah <laughs> they've done a beautiful job and uh, it's nice for the girls and girls who have worked hard and uh, uh, John talked about it earlier when we were getting ready before the game, how it builds so much camaraderie to be in that locker room and to be there as a team. So it's uh, it's nice to have a nice uh, locker room where they can build some uh, team skills. Yeah, I definitely want to go take a look at it sometime Wait, soon. Maybe that can maybe we can hire a painter or something to do a mural of Angie. Or the, there you go. Right in the locker room. Yeah. Well, I'm a pretty good painter after my house, but I won't oh, paint a mural yeah. on myself. But if they need no, some right. touching up on the walls, I can probably do that. Yeah. Well, oh. thanks again so much. We're uh, we're ready, almost ready to restart. One nothing after one here with the Zephyrs ahead of the Orioles. But Thank thanks you, Angie. Again yeah. to Angie. Thank Keesley, you, Angie, very much. Parks, uh, all American and thanks, former. Thanks again. We're going to step away just for one minute and we'll be right back here on Park 16.
Ever notice how many things today kids can do without actually moving? A whole lot of things their parents used to do the hard way. So many kids' activities today seem to leave out the activity part, which makes exercise even more important for children. In fact, new research tells us the best time to enhance bone development is during childhood and adolescence. And just getting children to walk an extra 35 minutes a day could spare them the pain of thinning bones later in life. Healthy bones come from healthy habits. Encourage your kids to get up, get out, and get moving. Hello. Hey, Grandma, how about another grape soda? A public service message on building strong bones for kids from the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of North America and the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. All right, and we are back here at the rec center after that long hiatus, that long one-minute break. John Basil along with John Fromm as we begin, begin to start period two. Matamita, I did have a 12-4 shot advantage for the first period, and we mentioned the, uh, the goal that was scored. Both teams will start out with their first units here, as it's the Arnson, Brune Bryant, and Anna Basil line, locked up with uh, Berggren, Donovan, and McAlpine up front for the Zephyrs. So you take a look at the shots. St. Louis Park has Natalie Vig and Megan Behrens on defense, and Erickson and Amy Krebsbach on defense for the Zephyrs. Here's Natalie Vick for the Orioles. We'll see if, what kind of changes to base that Donnie Williams and the staff might have talked about for breakouts and aggressiveness. Uh, always yeah. interesting, that's one of the things I think is so fascinating about hockey is what type of adjustments you can make based on what happens period by period and as a coach, that's really yes, and it can make a big difference. You know, you can read what they're doing. Are they doing a two-man forecheck? Are they doing a one and a half? Are they doing a one? And you can see, read what they're doing. If they're DR pinching, right. you know, to use the center or chip it out. Uh, right. You know, a couple different breakouts to combat that. If they're coming down hard, it's easy to go to D to D. And sometimes you need that first period to read what the other team's doing and make your adjustments and away you go. And here's someone that doesn't need a lot of adjustment. Megan Barron's with a nice attempt at a backhand pass that just missed. I think that was Leah. No, that was Eva, Eva Rose. Rose. I'm just sorry. missed it. Yeah. Yeah. Almost a nice. Uh, you don't see a lot of backhand shots or passes anymore. It's kind of a, a dying art. But Megan's got the st strength and speed to be able to put that off. Nice job that time, as Bridget Duffy playing defense that time is able to knock it away from McAlpine on a possible one-on-one -on -one break. It was, a, it was an offsides even after that, but she was really aggressive on getting it out of the zone, uh, which created that offsides. We talked about Elena having five goals and an assist on the season. Molly Arnson is the second leading scorer for Park with three assists on the year. And then Megan Behrens and Brune Bryan also have two points apiece. So Orioles have scored seven goals in their first four games. And aside from the the six nothing loss, they've had three really close games all the way through. So they have, and then I tell you, Molly Arnston is a heck of a skater and really yeah. sees the ice well. And here's somebody that sees and shoots it well. That's Elena Basil on her off wing that time. And when we say off wing, folks, that means if you're a right-handed shot, instead of playing right wing, you may be playing left wing. So your your stick blade is more towards the middle of the ice, which sometimes a lot of scorers and shooters like to have. Yeah, it gives you a little bit of better angle on the goaltender. You're, the puck's more towards the center of the ice, uh, which can allow you to see a little more of the net. Yeah. And then St. Louis Park tries to break it ahead as Leah tried to pass it to herself off the boards, but it's stolen away and punched back down low by Bartholomew for the Zephyrs. Matamita going for a change here. Yep. Oh, oh just missed on the headman oh. pass, and we're going to have an icing as it looked like uh, Sophia Kiefer was knocked down inadvertently there with some contact. No call on the play, but uh, uh, they bumped into each other a little bit. Take a look over there. Donnie Williams barking out some instructions in a positive manner as only he can do. Absolutely. Donnie, will, says Donnie will, uh, has high expectations for the girls, as any coach does, and he'll make sure if they're not uh, meeting the expectations, they know about it. Right. Okay. So 14 and a half to go here in period two, and Natalie Vig will gain possession off the nice faceoff win by Artson. Nice job changing direction on the breakout that time and Basil is able to get it on the wing here. Here comes Anna as she beats Donovan with good speed. Here's Anna with strength on that right wing. Goes around the net and passes it out front. 
tries to find Molly Arnson breaking down that slot. Nice job by Anna, able to, with strength, hold off one of the strongest players, Kelly McAlpine. From it's Monday nice Day. to see the drive in the net. Uh, yeah. You know, you can create a lot of goals when you go to the net hard. And uh, there she just had a nose for the net and went hard and put it in front and uh, almost created an opportunity there. And when you watch the replay, you could almost see where McAlpine was trying to impede her progress by almost holding on to her. Oh, yep, and she still to slow had the strength to, to fight through that. So. It'll redirect and a nice headman pass that time, and St. Martin will have the puck with speed for the Zephyrs pick. Barron stakes her out to the wide side, and Staffney able to push it off to the side for St. Louis Park. A little break on that time, a little group in here, and here comes Brune Bryant from her left wing position. She's got Barron's ahead of her. Let's see what she chooses to do. She does Ooh, kick it to Marion. Yep, and look at Molly's speed. Yeah. yeah, just a real little, a nice little touch pass up to Molly from Megan and uh, the M&M &M girls working their magic. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Mo Molly hits, hits that young lady, Yapella, from behind, I believe that was her number, and knocks her to the ice. Out to a point. Here's Sophia with a wrist. Yeah, there she we scores go. a and beautiful what a shot wrist shot by Sophia. And number wow. 14, that's Sophia Kiefer as she hits her second goal of the year here at the 338 mark. And we'll watch that as the Orioles bomb each other. As we watched the replay, there was a lot of good things that happened, and I'm not sure. I think they looked like uh, came out to the point. Nice speed from I, I Elena, think, I think. Yeah, I think it was Elena with the, uh, the assist out to the. And, and that was the play there because Elena didn't really have an angle, but she did a nice job on the backhand pass out to the point, and Sophia with a quick release on that wrister. It's nice to see when the girls feel nothing down low that they work at high to open defensemen. They're able to take right. a shot, create opportunities. Here we got another opportunity. Here's Elena again, and she's got one more point on the night. And she's got it down low. She's got Cunningham on that far wing. Rose tries to stop position, and here's Kiefer. Sophia Noreen on that from Elena Basil at the 338 mark that time. And here's a nice breakout this time for Mata Mita, number four. Here's Amy Krebsbach all the way with a shot, just misses the net by Krebsbach. Nice rush from her right D position. Puck is iced all the way down. There was so, some pressure there, took a quick ice, rang it around. And Mata Mita's got two or three good puck rushing defensemen too that they'll throw at you and mix and match with the five they rotate through there. They do. Yeah. They're very solid. Uh, and they come at you. Uh, like we say, you look at their, uh, they're going, uh, they're, they're spotting the third line, but they're coming at you hard with two lines. Right. Um, uh, which is a challenge for uh, 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 some of the uh, park lines, but overall, I think that the girls are working very hard. Here's Megan with speed and strengths up the right wing. She gets it over to Sophia Kiefer. Sophia loses it momentarily. Taken away by McAlpine. Goes to her backhand. The right-handed shot. Forehand. Oh, and a nice job by Staffney shutting down that five hole. I thought she had it when McAlpine pulled that right. forward to the forward. It was a beautiful save. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. right after the save, yeah. uh, Megan Barons took a penalty. Uh, I didn't quite see it, but it looked like uh, trying to just get someone off their... Uh, Knock him a little bit off balance on the back end of the, the She post. hit McAlpine yep. out. And you know, not a bad penalty because Megan had to assume there was gonna be a rebound, rebound attempt. And she was, McAlpine had all the position there. We'll see what they do here for as far as their power play. You know, we'll take a look at the numbers out here. We've got Berger and Donovan and McAlpine on the front unit with Gibson and Deans back there for Matamidi. For St. Louis Park. You've got Duffy out there. Oh! Puck is pissed out for Arnson tries to corral that thing. They're working a, a box with uh, one yeah. person in the middle, a box and one in the center. Right. Power play, uh, which is a common power play normally for a five on three. Uh, right. But they're working with that with a five on four. St. Louis Park able is staying in their square box as you see this time. And there's Noreen trying to battle it, goes back to the point. Puck is shot wide of the net. And here's Bergren back to the point, and she's got Donovan down low there, along with Gibson. They move Gibson, who's one of their, probably their best puck rushing defenseman, up forward a lot on the power play, it looks like here. Yes. Switch her around a little bit. Try to get a little more offensive uh, firepower yeah. up front. 
So one minute relieved, and we'll see if Noreen, oh, nice job. Oh, not able to get it out, but Noreen with a nice job passing it forward to Brune Bryant. Yeah, that looked like it was going to get out, and uh, some good work by the defense. Again, that uh, yeah, their defense are very good at keeping that puck in. They do. They've got go. really good hands. And St. Louis Park, with only 35 seconds, able to relieve pressure. Only 35 seconds remains as the Orioles complete their change here. We're 1-1 one, one with 10:30 to go in the second period, and for the Zephyrs going to the back end, there's number 15, Madison Bergren, and a nice job, and she does a beautiful flop to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. Nice save. Nice save. Controlled the rebound, froze it. So we still got 23 seconds of uh, uh, PK penalty kill to go. Right. Uh, we'll box up now. This looks like their second power play unit. We'll see how they work here. Yeah, this is Rath Manor off the point. She wins the draw clean. Back to Deans. Deans pushes it down low over to Erickson. Bartholomew. Get out. Yep. Yeah, McAlpine. Go. Bartholomew in front of the net. Pushed away that time and. They'll able to hold possession. Just a few seconds remaining on the power play. Staffing loses control momentarily, but back to her post position. Orioles are at full strength. They sent Megan right out of the box, right to the puck, which is a smart move since it's in our zone. Yep. And, and hopefully we can, uh, big strong uh, person, hopefully they can get their normal line combination back out here. Oh, nice weak side pass that time. Cross ice to Leah Schrake. Here comes Schrank off the left side. She'll stop and look back to the point. She tries to get it. Taken away that time by Deans. Deans for the Zephyrs. You can see one uh, adjustment that uh, Coach Donnie Williams made during the period. Now here's a two on nice one. Nice job by Vig just chipping it out. Almost an offside, but Megan, nice job. Just with a little shoulder to ride her off the puck there. Taken away by Megan Behrens, 22, with speed off that right wing. She's just going to shoot it in and change herself on the fly. Nice job that time. And now they're able to get their first line back out and get back to their line combinations after that penalty. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is uh, they're working at high to the defense. So Donnie Williams didn't make the change during the period. I could tell tell the forwards bring it high to the point. Yeah. And uh, use your points because they are open. As you can see, they right. bring five low right now. The points are wide open, so they're trying to bring it high to the points. Yeah, they're not really they're really sagging a lot defensively, Matamidi. So. And you see the Zephyrs again on a redirect on a three on two partial break. Puck a shot wide of the net. Selwood this time out there with Sarah Krebsbach for them. And the Orioles will be able to relieve pressure again. Only we're halfway through the second stanza here and we've got a so really some nice things even with the with the power play kill there and then the, the goal on the beautiful shot at the point by Sophia Noreen. We're knotted at one here. And uh, yeah, it was nice to see uh, Sophia Noreen as that pass came out, fire that, uh, bury that puck. Sophia Noreen, uh, people don't realize this about her, but she is uh, in the summer, she's a, a very, very good uh, uh, sailor. Oh, uh, really? Yep, she sails and uh, she's out uh, on Lake Minnetonka. Lake Minnetonka, or? she sailboat races. And um, she uh, does very, very well for her class. Boy. Um, I know there's a, I know somebody was telling me that Minnetonka High School has like a formal sailing club and they do. some things like that, they but do. that's in, in family involved in that too? I, I think or? her, her uh, okay. father was involved and uh, subsequently uh, uh, it's a passion of hers. Uh, you know, oh. the two things she does is sailboat race and play hockey, which you don't hear about that often. Those two combinations, you, you hear lacrosse sometimes right. and uh, golf or well, even what? tennis, but uh, you know, sailboat and hockey. Well, you know, but you've got to be really athletic to run a sailboat to switch the riggings and whatnot. Yes, you do. Oh, puck is pu pushed out front. Oh, and a nice job that time. I don't know if Staffney got a stick on that, but Hagstrom was camped out front trying to redirect that thing for Matamidi. And here's Elena in the corner. She's got Rose with her. St. Louis Park also has Cunningham out there. Natalie Vigo tried to hold it in, but a two-on-one situation. But Megan is able to corral that puck as it momentarily lost control. Nice job by Barons with a stop-and-go move. The park's able to break it out. It's nice backhand move there by Rose, able to gain possession there. Yeah. Yes, we're fortunate not at ice there. Went off a Montemidi player. Not a lot of stoppages in this game, and a lot of times when you're only playing two lines, you're going to get some tired young ladies. But they, you can tell both these teams are in pretty darn good shape. They've really worked hard in the offseason. Yeah, they have. And they're a few weeks into it. Their lungs are there, and they're both going up and down very hard right now. It's a good pace. Yeah. 
Real entertaining game and definitely some skills shining too. I can see why Donnie, as well as Laura May, the Matamidi coach, is encouraged with the youth. Of oh, Earth. here we go. There's a, a nice check. check. Molly Arnson going to the forehand. Papuk is momentarily batted out of the way there by uh, Sarah Krebsbach. Yeah, that was a nice play. A nice uh, neutral zone uh, uh, turnover, turnover was created, and Molly came in and at least was able to put one on net. Yeah, absolutely. And we've only got seven minutes remaining in the second stanza. We should mention all you Park fans, make sure you stay with us after the second period concludes. So we're going to have a discussion about the locker room improvements and, and recognize some of the parents and friends that have made that happen, along with Mr. Basil, who will... Uh, Puck a shot on that that time by Duffy from the right point position. You see Catherine Evans out there for a spot shift. The Good back grader. check by Leah here. Yep. Nice job that time. She got nice job by Stephanie. She got a portion of the glove on it. Didn't have complete control, but used that stick to bring that puck into her into her uh, pad and corral that thing. Stephanie's been doing a wonderful job of controlling those rebounds. You saw number five from Anamidi breaking hard and she was able to pull it in and gobble that puck up. See the changes that time by the Zephyrs as they'll, they'll bring that third unit out there, excuse me, for them with Heinel, St. Martin, and Selwood, that third unit out there. St. Louis Park got a little bit of a mismatch here. We haven't seen a lot of that third unit for the Zephyrs. No, this should give, uh, hopefully, St. Louis Park an opportunity. Oh, they... a beautiful save and a beautiful yes. follow-up. The, the, the uh, number 16, St. Martin, for Matamidi, got the rebound if we go to the highlights there. And she tried to use, go to her backhand and bank it in off the inside of the left pad. But she a nice did. job by Stephanie to fall straight down and not allow that bank. Is there you see the re the shot went right off that instep. Great awareness by yeah. uh, uh, Stephanie to know where that puck was and to make sure she sat straight down on it. Well this third unit's got a lot oh, of uh, third line is going at it. Yeah they haven't had a lot of ice but they've got a lot of fuel in the tank that's for oh, sure. Boy. Puck is shot out front beautiful save and the follow is batted in that time by St. Martin. So St. Martin will put the put the Zephyrs ahead two to one here at the 606 mark as she follows up a beautiful shot and pass and for Natalie St. Martin that is her first goal of the year and I believe that was assisted by number seven Selwood as you take a look at the replay here the same kind of thing Park beautiful job getting the puck back to the point goes unfortunately off the Orioles stick right to the center yep yep the, just the a park, bad break for the yeah, Orioles the park player did what they're supposed to do get that stick on the ice and just yeah so so, nothing Donnie can be disappointed where there. Just a beautiful, beautiful attempt at a nice play, but bad luck that time, yeah. A little offside is going to be called here. <laughs> Molly Arnson, Molly Arnson and Kelly McAlpine were kind of tangled up tangled there. Up, Molly yeah. decided to take her to the dance. All right, and the right. dance was in the Orioles zone. Looked, looked so. like they were connected. <laughs> so, 5.45 remaining in the second period here. Oh, and we've got a, a Finnish exchange student, Jesper, making his way up. We'll have to discuss him a little <laughs> bit later, too. If somebody that's a visitor at your house for the school year, that's an interesting story for another time. It sure is. Yeah. So breakout this time. Nice, nice job on the breakout. Three really nice passes. And Arntzen's final pass to Brood Bryant. Sends her cruising down the left wing. Her attempt at a shot is held up momentarily. But she still battles hard in the corner, and Molly follows that puck well. See if she goes back to the point with it. Oh, she oh. tries a nice diagonal pass. Unfortunately, Just nobody missed. home there. Yeah. That was a really beautiful breakout that sure time in that sequence. Three really nice passes in a row. Anytime you get some tic-tac-toe and passes oh. like that, it's going to open up ice space. It's going to allow people to move forward quickly. People don't realize, too, when you come to a game and you see that, you don't realize how many... Hundreds and hundreds of hours of possible three on one break there averted by a nice poke yeah. check by Noreen. So Sophia able to momentarily relieve pressure. Still trying to bang it up that near side wall. And Krebs Bach along with her partner Gibson back there. Here's Gibson the senior for a nice breakout pass by Gibson that time as she found Hagstrom. Stolen away by Shrank. Shrank and Evans out there along with Sophia Kiefer. Yeah, Sophia Kiefer, 14. So they're spotting that third, you know, Catherine Evans getting some time in Leah, which yes. they're needing to do, you know, to 
Goes to the forehand that time. Staffney will, oh, fall on it, but the puck is loose. She didn't have control, and the puck is loose there in front of the net. And we've got a scrum of Zephyr and Oriole players. Looked yeah. like she tried to fall on it, and she just couldn't get it clean, and then the puck went loose. Looked like it bounced a little bit, and then she was able to get it after a little bit of a scrum. Yeah. Yeah, it was bouncing, which is not, it doesn't <laughs> happen that often, uh, but it was bouncing. You know, Frommers, I look in this crowd today, what a crowd. Uh, with the band and the uh, cheerleaders, I look uh, look uh, down. This is uh, one of the larger crowds uh, oh, yeah. that we have seen here for the girls' uh, high school hockey uh, in some time. It's wonderful to see. But I'll tell you one of the things the girls are good at, that Facebook and social media. Oh, absolutely. Uh, oh, nice follow-up this time. A puck is shot and it's turned away. Yeah, just getting the word out on all these games, a beautiful attempt that time by 21 Heinel to knock it in. And we should mention, too, that you know, if, if for I'm going to ask Paul maybe to put this graphic up. If you want to order a copy of the game today, you go to parktv.org, parktv.org, or there's a phone number that Paul will put up where you can order, which is 952. I'll wait till he gets it ready. Um, but anyway, that's a great way to find out about these games. But visit the gopark.org website for all the schedules too. I tell so many people to go on gopark.org, and a lot of people still aren't familiar with. You got the north there. You see how you can get a copy of the game, Paul, if you want to throw that up again. You, uh, people don't realize that the North Suburban Conference puts the whole conference schedule on the website, so you can just click on St. Louis Park and find out week to week everything going on at every time. And there's no better value for parents oh. than high school sports. No. I mean, you can buy ten. You can buy the ten punch passes as an adult for forty dollars. Right. Right. You know, and, and, and it's. Uh, Oh, a shot. beautiful shot that time. By number four that time, Amy Krebsbach at the 329 mark. She, they win the draw, and Krebsbach is able to rifle that home, number four. Take a look at that again here. Nice, clean face-off win, 17 for them. McAlpine from Donovan wins the draw to McAlpine, and her backhand pass to Krebsbach gets the job done. Yeah, it was, a, it was a clean draw, and, and I tell you, draws are very important. We can all three goals this period have come out off of bringing it high yeah, to the point. Exactly. And, from both uh, teams, right? Exactly. And, they, and the points are open, and when they feed the points, they're getting those scoring opportunities. Right. Great point, and I think we're going to have a penalty whistle right now on, I think, on 17 McAlpine for bottom eight eye. Well, this yep. will give an opportunity for the power play that's been effective so far for uh, the Orioles. We'll see if it uh, can continue to be. Uh, but that also takes one of their better uh, yes. players off the ice that probably is normally on the PK. So we'll yes. see how the we'll see how the girls execute. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, both the last two goals that put Matamita ahead, really great goals. I mean, one one goal goes off the Oriole player's stick, and the girls got a 15-foot shot on right. the blessed. And that's just a clean face-off win with a nicely executed back pass to the point and a clean shot. Yes. You know, you can live with a giving up a goal Absolutely. on a really well-executed play. So, so just three minutes remaining, and Megan Barron's unable to hold that in at the point for St. Louis Park. You see down in the left corner there. So for St. Louis Park, an important part of the game, their first real power play opportunity of the game. And you see uh, Elena Basil out there with Anna Basil, Molly Arnson, Megan Behrens. Now, has Elena been playing uh, been playing the point a lot on the power plays? She or has they been not moving been around? playing the power points, so they've got her uh, kind of moving around a little bit. Okay. And maybe she's not here today. Maybe they're, oh, they're actually only got Megan at the point. Maybe they're just playing with one defender here. I think they are, and I think that's probably because of the injury. Yeah, that could very well be. Here's Behrens. We'll go the wrister down low. Oh! oh almost. They were Kept really close down on, on the ice yep. and a nice redirect. You can see why Parks put in four power play goals already on the year, including three by Elena. The coaching staff has worked very hard on the power play, and it's really paid them some dividends. Nice hold that time by Barons, and she holds again. Nope. Unfortunately, not able to. One minute remains in the power play, a little over two minutes in the second period here. And for the Zephyrs, a nice job just shooting it down. Park will change a couple of their forward positions on this break. As Brun Bryant comes off the line, and Leah Schrank is out there as well this time. And Catherine Evans getting some power play time as well. 
So Elena and Anna out there, and unfortunately we're going to have an icing call with 39 seconds remaining on the power play, John. Right, yeah, unfortunate to take uh, icing on the power play. Uh, I think Megan was looking for the winger wide. Uh, sometimes if you can't catch the pass, best thing is just to chip it and <laughs> let it go deep and avoid the icing. And, uh, but, they, uh, but they look good. When they were in the zone setting it up, they look good. They moved the puck well. Little backhand attempt this time put on net by number 10 Rath Banner. Nice job this time by Matamina holding it in as Deans holds it in this time again. And here's Duffy unable to gain control, but she skates it behind her net, looking for a forward to pass it to. Unfortunately, Deans steals it for Matamida and shoots it on net. So nice job. Oh, the puck is still. I thought it was momentarily corralled, and I think they did whistle it down, but. They did. It may give them an opportunity to get the power play unit back out there. You know, one thing we didn't really talk about. I was looking. Donnie gave me some stats for the game and uh, or for the season, and the set. We didn't really talk about how the second period being the long change period in yes. high school hockey, here, here meaning you the, have you have the farthest distance to go to complete your changes. Oftentimes, that's really a telltale period. It can be, um, and, if, and if you don't execute those changes or gain possession of the puck you can really get bitten by that pill. You sure can. Uh, it's uh, very uh, uh, there's a good uh, nice, save. nice save and uh, the coach is looking for a change so very smart uh, move by the goaltender to hang on to that puck uh, allow the change. The ref uh, didn't allow them to get the get the last change that they wanted to at the last whistle and uh, good heads up play by Staffney to allow a change. Oh nice clean face off win. And a nice redirect that time. Oh boy. Boy, Another, lucky. Ooh, yeah. So. I tell you, there was number 16 down there, St. Martin again, who has got one goal earlier. So just a minute 11 remaining in the second period. And for the Zephyrs, they are able to kill off the power play here. Park girls just need to work a little more when they've got time. Hold on to the puck, look for a stick to stick pass. Um, and. Uh, uh, I think when they get it in the zone, they still have the opportunity to bring it high on the points. Monomedi does pinch very well. See yeah. what we do here. There's oh, a little yeah. chip up. A lot of good stick skills for their defensemen. Too yes. good hand-eye coordination to be able to hold that in. And right. So for the Zephyrs, they'll try to add one to their total as they are up three to one with only 45 seconds remaining. But for St. Louis Park, here's Lauren Boone Bryant with a shot that just misses the far side on the post. And here's Natalie Vick. She's able to push it down low. A little scrum of players on the near side, but Molly Arntzen able to win a battle in that corner there and also do a nice job with her stick to lift the stick of the opposing player. Oh, and an Oriole is taken down out front, and Boone Bryant is punched. Pushed down to the ice. I don't know if you saw that, right. John. No, but yeah. call. no call. No call on that. There's a battle. Icing. Which yeah. gives 14 seconds. Chance to set up something off the draw here in the second and hopefully maybe get one before the end of the period. Now, who is the Orioles' best draw winner, would you say, from this right circle position? From like this that? right circle position, uh, this, this particular line they have out right now, again, they've mixed up lines a little bit with uh, Frank being out, but certainly Molly on that first line wins the draw as well. Okay. And here you had Eva, Eva Rose. And, uh, but here we're, we got a deep at least, and we'll see if we can win that battle. Yep. And uh, there's a battle in the corner. They're keeping it down deep that's, deliberately. And that's some good senior leadership yes. by Gibson. There's no reason to They're, try to turn that puck over or do something that's going to cause a chance. Absolutely not. And you can see the defense of Matamidi right now really doing a uh, really nice job of controlling not only the point in the offensive zone, but down there. That's great leadership not to bring it back out in front of that slot with a few seconds left. Eat that puck, run out the clock. Go to the locker room with a three to one lead and and uh, try to hold it in the third. And John will get us his shots on goal stats in just a second. John, was that was that six? They, they got a two period total of 29. So uh, okay. So uh, in the first period. Uh, they had 12, so they picked up a, um, a another 17, 17 shots in the in the second, and uh, uh, Park picked up another six for 10. So this is the first game 
uh, Frommer that Orioles have been outshot. Right. They have outshot in their first uh, uh, in their first four games. They've outshot the opponents every game. So this tells you the strength of this team that they're playing. Right. And of course, last year this team was ranked. Uh, sure. It was a ranked team. Was a very good team. So uh, we'll see. Uh, We'll see if they can come back. This uh, I can tell you this: uh, these uh, young young women have come back in two of their games, one right, for a right. victory and one for a um, uh, one for a tie. So they're certainly capable. Yeah, absolutely. And John, before we go to break here, I just wanted to acknowledge we we, we talked with Angie briefly yeah. about a yeah. lot of the locker room improvements. And as you get a guest ready here, I'm just going to read a note that Coach Williams gave to oh, me. Yeah. John Basil. John, I'm in. At Put that off. Uh, as we get, John's got a guess. I'll let you introduce him, John. Yeah. And Thank you, Frommer. This is Ed from Voyevich Construction. And did I say that right? Voyevich Design Build. Yep. Voy Voyevich uh, uh, Design and Design and Build. And I tell you what, uh, Frommer, we are very fortunate. Uh, this construction company, who you see their advertisement up at the rec center, uh, was very nice to donate uh, a tremendous amount of wood uh, to help the girls build locker stalls and a brand new locker room here at the rec center. And uh, if you're ever at the wreck I'm sure that someone will let you in and take a look but it's uh, it's a beautiful locker room gives the girls somewhere where they can bond as a team be together uh, feel that uh, uh, all their hard work on the ice is appreciated and uh, I know I'm one of the parents on the team I, I okay. sincerely yeah. and I know all the parents and 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 the school and all the kids in our association who will be coming up and will enjoy that locker room for years to come really appreciate your company yeah. and the donation that they made yeah, absolutely I think uh, you know I just uh, left the locker room. It looks wonderful, and I know a lot of uh, hard work on the part of the parents uh, went into uh, volunteer time to make that look really great. And uh, our hope is just that it inspires the girls to uh, play some quality hockey, that, the same quality hockey that uh, St. Louis Park is used to seeing over the years. And uh, like you said, it gives them a place to go and, uh, and be inspired. Yeah, it does. And, uh, you know, it's some, sometimes your environment that you're around can, uh, just like you say, help create and bring things up to that next level. And um, they certainly have a first-class uh, locker room thanks uh, thanks to your company's donation. So. Absolutely. We're uh, happy to do it. But I don't know I don't know how you would, were contacted about all this, but <laughs> I know there's a lot of happy people. Uh, Coach Williams and a lot of them we've been known for several years, John and I, and I know uh, this means a lot to them long term. So how did it all come together? Did you have a friend's parent on the team? Well, or? actually, uh, one, of our, uh, one of our beloved employees uh, is a uh, <laughs> parent of one of the girls on the team. So oh, okay. he approached us, and, uh, and he's a highly skilled uh, craftsman, so he did most of the carpentry work and uh, yeah, approached us with uh, the idea and uh, you know, and the need, and, and we certainly you know, are happy to step up and fill the need. Yeah, that's great. And you know, um, uh, Nick Sparides, there was a lot of people that helped. Nick Sparides, who was an architect on, and part of the boys coaching staff, did the design of the locker room, drew up the stalls. And then with your company's help, uh, uh, the wood was there. And then uh, Patrick and Karin Ka uh, Carlander, who was your employee and his spouse, really went to work on getting the uh, stalls built, designed. Um, and I, I shouldn't even start listing the names of the parents, but all the parents stepped forward uh, from Laura Arnston and Angela Jermusek, who right, worked right. hard to organize it, to uh, Je uh, you know Jeremy Staffney, who did the banners for the locker room, uh, Howard Noreen, uh, moved the old benches out of the locker room, held with the sheetrock. Uh, same with Greg Meredith. Uh, 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 my lovely wife Sue stained in here uh, until. No, was the, that was that? Did she know she was going to be put her, her put skills to work, were going to be put to put here? to work as a stainer for uh, late nights uh, and also helped with our press box issue. But really a nice. Uh, cohesive effort from the parents to pull this locker room off in a very, very short time frame, along with painting the locker room. And uh, I, 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 I know I'm going to be remiss, and I apologize for the parents who I didn't mention sure. it happened, but I can tell you it was all the parents. But it could not have got going without, yeah, have without your uh, company coming forward and uh, donating the wood, because without the wood, we couldn't have built the locker room. Right, right. So uh, it, uh, it, a heartfelt, really, appreciation for everything you guys did. And uh, I'm glad you got to see it, because you see how much it means for the girls and how they got stalls. And, uh, uh, you know, many, uh, 
many um, uh, high schools today, colleges have oh, yeah. locker rooms. It's part of the team building process. It makes them feel comfortable. I think the only thing left probably next year, uh, we'll, we'll probably look to put some uh, carpet in there and then it'll be as good as any college locker room. Because uh, you know, you get to college and most college locker rooms have stalls like that and then they have carpet and it uh, instills some pride and makes them keep it clean. So. Right, right, absolutely. Well, I think the, the girls work hard and uh, you know, they deserve some appreciation. And I think uh, the fact that it was a, a group effort, a community effort, makes it that much more meaningful. Tell us a little bit if anybody's ever interested in looking at your uh, company. Uh, what's your website address? Uh, we're at Boyevich.com. It's B U J O V O V I C H, Boyevich.com. Okay. And uh, we're a residential modeling and new construction company. We work primarily in the uh, south, southwest uh, metro area. Okay. And uh, do a lot of work in, uh, in St. Louis Park and. Uh, Lakes area, Minneapolis, and Dine area. So, kind of all over town here and uh, do all types of projects uh, small remodel projects, large remodel projects, as well as custom new homes. So, uh, we have a lot of uh, clients, repeat clients, and a lot of friends in the community. So, that's kind of what keeps us going every day. That's well, nice to hear. Well, and uh, that's great. To, and thank you for stopping up and all that you did. And. And if they want to get the John Basil special, they should just call your office and, <laughs> and there'll be an extra 5% upcharge on all work. <laughs> That's right. If they mention my name, the price goes up. That's what happens most of the time. Uh, yeah. So Well, they then, need to make back what they've donated. So. <laughs> uh, well, we, we, did, uh, we did get some great advertising uh, uh, here at the, at the arena. Yeah. And, uh, and it's not really about... Uh, Know about that it's really about just helping out the community and uh, yeah. helping the girls out and uh, like I said hopefully inspiring them to uh, play some good hockey and I told them if they uh, if they don't pull out a win tonight I'm gonna go uh, take my wood back so. <laughs> oh boy well, no, I that's tell pressure you, I and I go down you. there right now this would be the time to infuse that right. message right these girls are good at coming from behind they were uh, down uh, a couple goals against Tartan in the first game came back yep. and won in overtime they were down against Bloomington Kennedy going in the third by two goals they came back and tied them and had an overtime tie against them. Right. So we're optimistic that uh, uh, that uh, speech you gave them <laughs> yeah. yep. will help them bring them back tonight and maybe they can uh, tie this thing up, send it to overtime, and maybe we can put another W on the board. Sounds good. All right, thanks again, and we're going to step away. So after two here at the rec center, it's the Zephyrs three, the Orioles one. Stay with us here on Park 16. every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. Fact is, if you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. One in five Americans is likely to develop a form of skin cancer during their lifetime. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. It could be the save of a lifetime. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. All right, we're back for the exciting third period. John Prom along with John Basil here at the rec center as the Zephyrs and Orioles will lock horns. Donnie Williams got the Orioles gathered over on the bench area. John, anything you're going to see differently, you think, this third period? I think the, the Orioles will push a little bit harder. They are going to pinch a little harder on D, being down by two. And uh, uh, I think they'll try to be as aggressive as they can and try to put one in and uh, make a game of this. Well, you take a look at the shots on goal there. As you mentioned, the first game all year, the Orioles have been outshot. But Orioles have, you know, with your music out on the blue line, Duffy's had to play back on D the whole game. and. We'll see what happens in the third. There's Noreen back in the corner. She's got the only goal for St. Louis Park from her defense position. Nice cross angle pass that time, right on the stick of Basil. 
Beautiful pass executed. Held in as well that time by St. Louis Park. Arnson with speed trying to pursue Selwood here. They're starting with their kind of a little mixture of their third unit here. They put Selwood out there with McAlpine and Bergren. So we are going to have a hooking penalty, I think, signaled on St. Louis Park as it looks like number two, Lauren Brune Bryan, is going to get the gate at the 16 16 mark. So we can follow the replay of that, John. Yeah, Lauren uh, was coming up, and I think she just started on the back check. So not what, up a hook. not what the doctor ordered, but for St. Louis Park, let's see who we see out there. We see the Basil sisters out there with Megan Barons, and I'm not sure. That was a nice draw win yeah. uh, back to Megan, and that's who you want to win it back to because Megan's got a strong stick, was able to put it right down the ice. That's Elena up there on the four check. Nice job harassing the blue liner from Adamidi. Broken out this time. But I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. There's Krebsbach in the yeah. corner. Oh, Krebsbach with a nice There's, pass again, right out. Megan, front. great defensive play by Megan to bat that puck out. Yep, she's got a lot of strength there for a senior, and she's been through the wars a lot of times. Breakout for the Zephyrs this time. They're able to gain possession. Natalie Vig in pursuit for St. Louis Park. Vig not able to corral that. Puck is passed out front, but Megan Behrens is able to seal that. Knock it to herself, and then a nice job wristing it off the skate of number eight, Rath Manor, for the Zephyrs. Beautiful job in that first minute of penalty kill by Megan. Here's Gibson. Yeah, absolutely. Gibson up ahead. Puck on the backhand is lost momentarily by Krebsbach. Amy Krebsbach behind the net. She's got her teammate Bartholomew out there as well. Bartholomew kicked oh, out and Gibson. Here goes Molly. She's got some speed. Yeah, she's got some of the biggest jets on the team, doesn't she, along with Elena and... Would you say those are two of the fastest skaters? Yeah, I would say that Molly's certainly one of the fasters. Yeah. Uh, um, Elena has got uh, good hands and uh, uh, a speed that's okay. I think you got some. Uh, she got that from you, the <laughs> Basil sisters. <laughs> Get that from Dad. And they got, um, but you look at people like uh, Eva Rose and Maris that can explode as well. And even the young Evans girl has some great speed for this squad. Oh, yeah. She really does. I and mean, she's thrilled to be out there. Puck is shot wide of the net this time by Dens. Excuse me, by Deans for. What a good penalty kill by the Orioles. Yeah, Unfortunate that, penalty and then a great kill. So, first things first, the Orioles get the kill. And here's Leah Schrank on the four check along with Barons. Nice blocker save, but a high rebound that time. A nice rebound shot save that time. Beautiful blocker save, but that puck bounced so far out that it created a great scoring opportunity for Bartholomew, and she just shot it again right into Staffney. Barons momentarily loses control. A little indirect contact behind the net. Both teams battling for the puck, and Natalie Vig will turn and skate behind her net and bank it off the near wall to try to gain some offensive zone pressure for St. Louis Park. Unable to clear it this time. Number two for for the Zephyr Selwood, able to punch it down low, and that's Bartholomew as well, who holds that time for them. And Matamidi will complete a full change this time, and Barron swoops behind her net. She's got Shrank far ahead, and she tries to find Leah. Nice job nice catching job. that pass. Leah Shrank, number 11, does a nice job putting it on net. That's, you know, really a long pass, about a 130-foot pass that, that she was got a beautiful taped pass. right to her, yeah. Brings out the uh, second line for the Orioles. See if they can win a draw and set something up. So here you got Eva Rose who's going to take this draw with Elena Basil back at the uh, left wing position. And on the right side, a momentary break here. Johnny Williams visiting with... On the right side, you got Maris Cunningham um, looking for a mouth guard that was left oh, on the ice. Oh, gotcha, yeah. Finding out who's missing that. That's nothing that you want to, no one claiming they've lost it. Nobody wants to look bad in no, front of their coach. I think that, uh, <laughs> oh, there it comes one. One was out there maybe without a mouth guard, but. Uh, <laughs> and that could be, we should mention, if, if they find, if they see you skating without one intentionally, right. they can, 
you know, right. they can whistle the penalty, but. And now they're no. making him make a change without giving him the penalty uh, because yeah. he was out there uh, not knowing where a mouth guard but went. Was. <laughs> right. So, uh, <laughs> not wanting to claim not wanting that she was guilty. It. Right, right. right. <laughs> Always want to look good in front of your coaches, right. yeah. So here's Eva Rose, nice stop and go move. Oh, she's able to hold it into Elena. Elena over to Rose. Rose pushes it behind the net where it'll be pursued by Cunningham and Elena. Nice job that time by Krebsbach as he pushes it ahead and she's got Berggren with her. Here's Madison Berggren. And Heinel out there as well. The offside, but they tagged up. Heinel again, the third line left winger for them, and that might be a nice little, she didn't quite reach the red line there. So the icing. Yeah, something the coach will probably address a little bit with her. She was about two feet from the red line, but when she shot that down and well, the Orioles are getting some chances here on the offensive draws at least to give an opportunity to win and set someone up. So here uh, is the first line with Molly who normally is pretty strong on the draws. We'll see if she can bring yeah. it back to Megan. Who's Megan a big was, shooter. Yep. Try to Looks win like that. she's going to go to the wing though. Yep. She tried to pinch go to the one side. Nice job on the breakout that time by 15 Berggren for them. Berggren out there with Donovan and McAlpine. Here's McAlpine to Berggren shot and oh it just bounces wide of the net. Nice job as well, momentarily trying to hold it in for Gip by Gibson that time. 18 for, for Matamida, the right-handed shot at defense. Gibson, really quality player for them. Nice job by Megan, stepping up and pinching and holding it, but McAlpine steals that puck, but unfortunately for her, she fans on it. And Megan got a penalty uh, for Did she get a little like rough a, up here or I running think she into did. her? She's calling it a check. Check, well, yep. the girl did go down at the blue line. But. Right. So not what the doctor ordered there at the 11.52 mark. Megan Behrens is going to get whistled for a, either. A, we should mention that in girls hockey, the actual act of a formal strong check isn't allowed. That's something for the safety of right. girls. You're going to see a lot of inadvertent contact, and you can still tie each other up. But that's right. So. But what, what wouldn't have been a penalty in the boys' Boy. game, unfortunately, is... Oh, they just got one Monomini for a interference. interference. So we'll go four on four for a while. So maybe the refs didn't feel good about even <laughs> sending Meg into the box. And although we don't want to say that, That's they right. even things up in right. five seconds. So. so now we got a four on four. So we'll see a little more ice out there for the girls. And we should mention, John, we didn't get a chance to talk to you, but you're also the uh, director of uh, Discover St. Louis Park, and that's a big part of your job, promoting St. Louis Park and a lot yeah. of the getting the hotels to work together with you to promote Absolutely. destinations and events a, coming on. It's a great community to be able to market. We have a lot, so many assets here community-wide, and um, uh, people, when they get here, are able to enjoy all the amenities that we have. You see Rath Manor out there along with Hagstrom and Bartholomew. That's second unit for them. So both teams will skate four on four here for about a minute 30. Which we'll see what, what team that favors. Oh, there goes the, oh and here's good speed. Elena with Molly. Molly able to stay on side. Elena gets the puck up to her. Molly, nice job taking that puck away momentarily from the player. But here's Rath Manor and Bartholomew out there. And here comes Bartholomew again with some speed. Just a little two on three. She shoots it in and they finish their change. It's 10.50 to go. They're going to make sure they keep fresh troops out there. Nice head man pass that time. And a nice move up the far side by Elena. Elena with a wrist shot will go wide and she'll peel on off and send new troops out for St. Louis Park. Here's Lauren Boone Bryant with a nice job trying to harass Gibson for them. Gibson with speed up the near wall. Gibson number 18 being taken out and tied up momentarily by the Oriole player. Little Oriole sandwich down there, a little two on one yeah. action. And that was a nice battle by them, especially in the defensive zone. Yeah, uh, only about 20 seconds remaining in the four on four here. You see Anna up there, St. Louis Park. Leah Schrank back there on defense in this scenario, a little one on one, and Leah steps up and kicks it ahead. She could have yeah. been beat on that time, but she used her feet and her stick in excellent manner. And here comes Leah again, goes to her strong side and just pushes it on in. As both teams will be at full strength, five on five here. Megan Barron's freshly out of the box, does a nice job in an aggressive manner going right to the net. 
think we're going to see a lot of Mega in the next couple minutes. And here's a one on one break this time. Here's 16, St. Martin. She's got one already. Beautiful save by Staff. Yeah. Top of the crease, square with the shooter, right into the glove. That St. Martin is their third line center for them, and she's got a goal and an assist in the game, but she's somebody they. They kind of integrate that third line, but they seem to have really a ton of energy when they, they do, do come out and the coach must say, give me 30, 40 seconds, seconds full speed to and then get the, off, yep. you know. But they give me spell the first two lines and when they go out there, they really buzz. Yeah, and that's nice to see. Oh, a backhand off the, you heard some iron clanking and a rebound and a shot and a goal by Rath Manor. Looked like Bartholomew hit the post on that. The puck was free and then, uh, Rath Manor and Bartholomew cashed in and Rath Manor officially gets the goal that time for them. Let's take a look at the backhand tier as Bartholomew hits the post, puck is behind Staffney momentarily and then just sitting free unfortunately. And uh, the puck had came out so far that Rath Manor are able to put it in at the 940 mark. So that'll make it four to one here in the third period for the Zephyrs. St. Louis Park will have to even further come out. Nice job on the shot that time yeah. by Duffy stepping Bridget up. Bridget Duffy up, who was uh, one of the transfers in this year. Of course, uh, she's had some family history from coming to Park, and it's great to see her here. Um, she's a, an interesting person, plays piano. Um, wow, you've uh, got a piano player, player. you've got, got somebody, sit, yes. you got somebody working the sailboat, yeah, sailboat uh, maybe somebody in debate, I or, uh, you know, I that's nice to see though, because it is, and that's one thing about St. Louis Park being that it's not an enormous sized school, a lot of kids can be involved in two, three, four things and get to experience life, which is wonderful. Yes. Now where is Bridget from? You mentioned she was at a private school in she the She was past. at a private school in Minneapolis. Oh, oh here we here's go. Lauren Brun Bryan, nice pass Right from. on the doorstep. And so this is her first year at the high school? First then? year at the high school. Okay. Uh, but they reside in St. Louis Park. Okay. Here's Megan on a pinch, starting to get aggressive, which uh, down four to one. Yeah. We're going to see a little more of that. Molly with tries a poke check there as, as Maris Cunningham does as well. What a nice job that time by Bartholomew shooting it down. Megan will have to run a stop and go move. Good speed on the corner that time by by Seidel, who's getting a shift in the game for them. We haven't seen much of her, number two. Oh, puck is shot out front. Rebound, nice tie up by Basil. Staffy not sure where it is, and here's Elena, swoops it away again. Nice aggressive four check this time, and aggressive play by them. The Zephyrs this time. We haven't seen much of that number two for Matamidi, uh, Juliana Selwood, but she's really done some nice work that time. Got some speed here. They're kind of spotting that. There's she's got out there with St. Martin, and here's Gibson again. Orioles will complete their change and might have an ice here. So at the 720 mark of period three. The Orioles will try to come back. We should mention this Saturday, the St. Louis Park boys team finally starts their season. You're an assistant coach with the boys program. Sean Podine in his second year with the coaching staff. You guys are hosting Waconia here this Saturday, December 1st at seven o'clock. Um, I know you've had a number of scrimmages. Uh, how are things progressing? I know uh, so, several player losses that you've had to deal with, yes. but you've been you've dealt with them and had a lot of practice time. Yeah, the, you know the the, the boys uh, are working very hard. Uh, good good bunch of young men. Uh, they're picking up the concepts and the systems very well. In the scrimmages, they've looked very good. Um, as we come up to Saturday night, uh, I think what you're going to see is a hardworking bunch of boys that enjoy the game and are having fun, and um, uh, you know. Uh, you hope that yields, uh, yields good results, but they look good. They look good. Well, and you know the nice part is you got the game this Saturday, and then you don't play again until the eighth. Behind the net is the Orioles. We should mention are on a power play here. Here's Elena behind the net. She's got she's got Arnson with her. Oh, a wrister, and it gets off the blocker and kicks wide. Number 19, uh, Sabrina Seidel in the penalty box this time for Matamidi. Arnson down there with Elena. Elena up to Molly. Molly goes to the backhand. Puck is shot off the net. And unfortunately for the Orioles, they're not able to corral that in, but Molly steals it away again. And Mo oh, <laughs> Megan stepped up, able to hold the zone, and Molly keeps it in. 
110 remaining in the power play. They're working it well. They're working it well. Elena out front to her sister. Oh, went wide, and then Molly tries to bake it in off the instep of the pad, and it doesn't go. Well, Elena. they certainly had opportunities on that power play to bury the puck. Here's a two-on-one for the Zephyrs. Puck is pushed down low, and unfortunately for them, uh, not able to convert that time is number eight for them, Natalie Donovan. She had a beautiful break with Berger in that time on the kill. Berger and Donovan out there with Krebsbach and Gibson. So just 30 seconds remaining as Staffney will stop that behind her net. And they are also trying to regroup. Oh, I was just going to say, so the Orioles, the boys team plays this Saturday, and then they don't play again until Saturday the 8th. So you really have a, almost a couple weeks really to get a lot of practices in after you've seen them in the scrimmage situations. And I know integrating the power play and the penalty kill is something that really hadn't really taken place all this week. Right, so right. you really want some of that time to Absolutely. work on those special Yeah, it was games. nice to see this week. Uh, was the first week where we really got into breakouts, uh, yeah. uh, reverses, D to D, moving the puck. Uh, looks like uh, uh, Monomita got another yeah. penalty. Uh, we'll okay. give another opportunity. We'll see if. Uh, I think it was on 16, but I might be mistaken. Little trip. No, I'm sorry. She got it on McAlpine, who gets her second penalty of the game. And she's not exactly thinking about exchanging holiday cards with the official after that no, call. But no, no. <laughs> the, uh, most of the Oreo, uh, there's a timeout by Coach Donnie, rest that power play unit. Yeah. They just got done, and they had tremendous pressure. Yeah. So if the power play unit can get rested and they can maybe bang one in here, uh, make it a two-goal game. Uh, you know, in hockey, the two-goal lead is the worst lead they say there is to have. So right, we'll right. see if we can get to at least uh, reduce it down to that two-goal lead. Yeah, I always got a kick out of that. I know. Um, as we get a break here, though, we should mention uh, that, Paul, if you want to put up, if you want to order a copy of this game or any game, uh, go to parktv.org. That's parktv.org. You can watch live web screening replays of all games, and you can also, and on demand, and then call 952 924 2635. That's 952 924 2635. I, I don't know how many people I've told this as well as you. Even if you don't have cable in St. Louis Park, you can watch all of these events via your computer. Number of the games we do, including tonight, are live on web streaming. So if you were at home on your computer today, if you couldn't join us live, you could watch it from home. It's absolutely and, uh, a great, uh, great way to catch the games, keep up with the games, enjoy the entertainment. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's really a great convenience to have. And not only that, but if you're not happy with the announcing, you always have that volume. But you got to turn home. the volume right down. Go yeah. right to right. It. Nothing, right. We won't. We, we won't take it personal. That's right. That's right. <laughs> there we go. Back to the point. Here's Megan with a hard slap shot that hits Rathmanner right in the kneecap. Megan again. She really does have the hardest shot on the team, doesn't she? She does. There's a little wrister that bounces wide. Back to Megan again, and they're. Orioles running that one one defender set on the power play a lot. A lot of that offensive firepower. Just 4.45 remaining in the game. Staffney will push it aside for Barons this time. Megan trips up the senior. She gets some help from Molly Arnson and she'll skate it up herself. And here's Lauren Brune Bryant, number two, looking for some help at the point and unfortunately, on the change there, there wasn't anyone there. Staffy will come out to try to redirect it. And probably wisely, after she momentarily lost control, she just falls on it to take that. Yep. It was a one-on-one -on -one situation, and uh, Coach Donnie giving some instruction there to his girls. Lauren Brune Bryant was waiting for the defender to come in, but she kind of telegraphed that she was going to drop past that. Yes. And Sophia didn't reach the point in time to hold that in. Hold so, in. Yep, yeah. smart play. Yep. You know, as you look at this uh, rec center, the one thing we did not mention when we were talking about all the locker room is how good of a staff they have here. Oh, right. And uh, well, we got uh, we had someone come out of the box late, but uh, looks like they blew the whistle because uh, they were not on the right side of the circle. Um, but uh, just great staff uh, uh, here. And uh, Casey, uh, you know, I was remiss that I didn't mention in the locker room. 
how uh, he helped out and the other staff a little. Uh, Casey helped out a tremendous amount and others with supplies needed to build that locker room. Just a great community effort and uh, much thanks goes to Casey who works at this rink and his willingness to help out uh, uh, the uh, St. Louis Park uh, girls hockey program. Right, and I know Johnny Olson has been a long time employee here. Yes. We didn't talk about it, but last last season, uh, Steve Hahn did that series of shows, and one of the things I really encouraged him to do was do a do a interview at, before he retired with uh, the legendary manager Craig Panning, who'd been here since '78. And right, I know uh, we're lucky that we were able to get that on tape with Craig's thoughts. But we do have a new rec center manager Jason here, who works a lot with you and Mr. Rosine on the association side and there's been a tremendous amount of improvements in this building in 15 years I remember you know entering up here on the top where the concessions would be then the second sheet got added with the Mighty Ducks grant now you've got talk about a community center concept going in here I don't know if that would be here John or if you've heard yeah, anything. Theo, the location hasn't been determined uh, nor has it been determined for sure if they'll do the community center but certainly uh, the task force that is exploring it and uh, uh, the current council will look at that and uh, if they move forward with it they'll determine the best location and there's several locations that have been talked about throughout the community but certainly one of them is at this location as well. Oh there's a nice shot put on that. Yeah it's a really an interesting time you know you've got a lot of improvements and you were really involved as I think Tim Donahue and others were with getting the artificial turf installed up at the high school to use for lacrosse and soccer and and now I just heard about the quarter million dollar grant for the redoing of the Louisiana Oaks fields and the baseball fields on that the north side were redone. So really nice time to be uh, involved in the resident in the city. Yeah, it, uh, the city continues to redevelop and be revitalized and it's nice to see, uh, you know, St. Louis Park is such a desirable place to be part of. Um, you know, and it goes back to not only the historic value that the city has, but the revitalization that we've seen right. uh, through the years and, well, uh, and the economic redevelopment. Well, and you know, John, with your work with uh, Discover St. Louis Park, um, I live right off Highway 100 in Crystal, just not too far at all. But um, we get a lot of news from Golden Valley, and they, there was a big discussion on Channel 12 last week and a story about Golden Valley trying to piggyback with what you guys have done in the West End and build that area across the street on 394. Mm -hmm. Technically, I know that's not in St. Louis Park, but right. it's 300 feet across the highway, and in a way, a lot of the hotels will see benefit from some new restaurants, et cetera, going in there, too. So, yes. And that West End has just been a gold mine, and what a, even with the TIF financing, and I know we're losing some chances here. Um, you know, 10, 15 years when those when those facilities go on the tax rolls, you'll eventually have a lot of quality tax revenue coming in that'll support other programs too in the city. Absolutely, you know? it's been a very healthy development, and it was one of the few developments that was no built uh, during the tough economic times. And I think people questioned it uh, sometime at the time, would it be successful? And it's been amazingly yeah. successful. Uh, I think it's exceeded everybody's expectations. And certainly that, uh, as you mentioned, the TIF money will be paid back uh, yeah. um, on schedule or ahead of schedule. And uh, that money will help, uh, help the city be very stable for a long time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, the, the location being right off, you know, Xenia and 394, it, you know, five minutes from downtown for the people, even that live in Plymouth or or Orono and want to just stop someplace conveniently off the highway, you know, that's not downtown. Right, right. So just 30 seconds remain here as we've had a little bit of back and forth action. Four to one, the Zephyrs will end up winning the game today as the Orioles will fall to one, three and one on the season. Puck is blocked down front. Oh, and a nice chance and another pair of saves. Tell you, she's only going to give up four goals on the game, but Staffney's, you know, counting what we had for the first two periods where she had 29 shots. She's probably had another 15 or so, so she's well over 90-some percent for a save yeah. percentage and getting a lot of quality exposure. And without Park having a JV, um, I can imagine how competitive the practices are being this year with her and the contest that uh, they must be having to determine who's going to get the starts and absolutely <laughs> that's a it's a battle now here uh, Donnie put out his fourth line for the first time this game give him a little ice yeah. time late in the game little experience this is uh, Meredith out there 
Um, is that Lexi and Lexi Baker? Baker? Yeah, let's mention her name for yeah. sure. Seeing a little bit of time. Some of the younger yeah. younger girls uh, saw their uh, first shift of the game. Nice to get them out there, get a little ice time. You yeah. know, overall, this Montemedi team was one of the stronger teams we've seen. It's the uh, it's the first time, as I've mentioned all year, that I've seen this uh, uh, girls team, uh, the St. Louis Park Orioles, outshot. Outshot, oh, um, you mentioned that. And uh, uh, a very strong team, obviously a ranked team from last year. Lost some seniors, so, you, you know, optimistic the... Uh, 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 going into the game that the Orioles could have been a little tighter, but overall, uh, not a bad showing. No, and you know, for the Orioles, a lot to build on. I know the Williams era is in year two here, and uh, with the new locker rooms, as we talked about, what a nice positive turn for the girls. For, for the Orioles, they do have a little bit of a break here, a good week off to work on some things they might want to deal with. Their next game is until Thursday, December 6th where they play at Parade against Minneapolis and their next home game, which I believe we'll have here is Thursday the 13th of December when the St. Francis Fighting Saints come to town and the Orioles will try to be a very rude guest and send them right. home up 65 in an unfavorable fashion. Yes, so. and I tell you that St. Francis has really became a rivalry. It's uh, normally, uh, it's been a very physical game uh, for the girls the last two years and um, actually last three years. And so uh, expect some, uh, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, although they can't check, a lot of rubbing out, a lot of battles in the corner. Uh, St. Francis and St. Louis Park have had some very good battles the past uh, three years. Pro I think if my recollection is correct, all the games have ended one way or the other in one goal uh, differential. So it'll be interesting to see how we do. And before we want to thank Misty Lewis, our crack photographer, and Paul Broden, our director, as always, down in the truck. Paul is here for every game and also does all the city council meetings, and both of them are, are members of the city of St. Louis Park staff. Um, we've got a lot of events. This is our first winter event we're going to cover this year for St. Louis Park and Benilde. Just a reminder that next Tuesday is one of the bigger events we'll cover in years as the boys basketball team has their first home game and they host number one ranked Apple Valley right with off the bat. Tyus Jones who's the yeah. national. So make sure you uh, go to parktv.org for all your winter TV fix and you can also order a copy of this game by going to parktv.org and calling the 952 924 2635 number you see on your screen. Always use that. And just a reminder to go to park, excuse me, gopark.org, gopark.org to get updates on all the schedules and all the teams play as all the schedules are out for the whole winter season. John, any final words before we head out? I enjoyed our, our, our uh, Very inaugural first, uh, opportunity. Inaugural opportunity. I'll remind the, uh, the people listening and watching that Saturday night the boys kick it off. Yes. And you'll see uh, your son in the nets uh, okay. uh, for opening night. It'll be an exciting night here at the rec center uh, to get the boys' season kicked off as well. Come on out and make sure you make your way out to the high school for swimming, boys, girls basketball, or the rec center. And also support those gymnasts and they need their support over at absolutely. Central. Absolutely, absolutely. On behalf of uh, all of our crew here with Park TV, I'm John Fromm, and on behalf of John Basil, everybody have a great night. Thanks for joining us.